Just some basic maintenance on this 80% downflow furnace. This system hasn't been serviced in a long time, but before we start cleaning this up, we're gonna run it to make sure the customer can't say, well, it was working before you got here. Just some basic test, checking the amps of the inducer fan motor, comparing it to the tag. We're gonna make sure that all the burners are firing up all the way across, the general color is acceptable, note the bad location of the thermostat, and then as the system cycles off, I'm gonna check the amps of just the blower motor by itself. Now we can start cleaning it, Horrible location, it's hard to get to those screws because it's behind a door. That's a big problem. The air is gonna be leaking from the blower. It's gonna pull air into the blower cabinet and it, because it's downflow, it can pull the flue gas out of that single wall flue pipe into the house. We wanna make sure all that's sealed up. So here I am just gonna clean everything up. I got a shop vac and a paintbrush and some rags and I'm just loosening everything and vacuuming up as I do. As I pull this flue pipe off to access the blower, I'm gonna put the shop vac there to clean up anything that's coming loose as I pull it apart. And once we get this door off, we can see what the blower looks like and we can also see what that return air. Oh, here we go. Surprise, the filter is a big mess. We're gonna have to replace that. Let's get that out of there. And let's clean up that blower the best we can. It's dirty. It needs to be pulled out. It needs to be cleaned. But how they installed that furnace, it's behind a wall. It will not come out. When the motor has to be replaced, at that point, we'll have to turn the whole furnace to get that out. Oh, look at that filter. They had a return air leak before. They said they took care of it. I did not verify. I should verify, but filter's obviously very bad. But anyways, once we replace this furnace, we can take care of the flue pipe. We can put in a better filtration without a pressure drop, but hey, we can only do with what we have to work with now, and I couldn't get the blower out. It is what it is. So that hole, made sure I sealed that hole up really good so we're not pulling any return air out there. I do note that that control board's been replaced. No big deal, I just wanna note it. Make sure we put all the screw holes back in so we're not losing any return air. More cleaning, inspecting the inducer motor since the flue pipe is off, making sure there's no corrosion or rust. Look at that flue pipe. I really don't like this flue pipe. I don't like the flue system. I don't like anything about this, but it's been there since 2016. We're gonna recommend they put in low level CO monitors on the house anyways. And when it comes time to replace this unit, we're gonna take care of all that and make it right. Now, normally don't pull the burners on every call, every maintenance call. First time I've been here, I wanna know everything about it. So I'm gonna pull every single burner out, clean it, and inspect all the heat exchanger tubes, get everything cleaned up. And actually, other than being dirty, it's in really good condition, so that's nice. Now, as we get this out and start inspecting it, we can see there's a damaged spot on the hot surface igniter. That must be changed. It's working now, but for how long, we don't know. So high priority customer needs to get that one fixed. We'll see if they do it today. Also, this flame sensor is really bad. They're always bad. They're, they always need to be cleaned. I'm using a Brillo pad. I do not use sandpaper because it can gouge the flame rod and it can leave a silica coating which can turn the glass in that burner. So the green, grillo, green Brillo pad is a great way of cleaning it. More cleaning of the system. Put everything back together. We want to make sure that those hot surface igniters, those jets, those burners, everything is lined up. All the crossover tubes are lined up so that when it lights, it lights smooth all the way across. I don't know how many times I've been to calls where the, the jets and shock burners are not adjusted right and we have some flame roll out. Now we just got to put everything back together and now we can start setting up for the testing procedure and combustion analysis. Testing time, but I have to put some holes in, retaining air supplier and the flue pipe. Going to set my probes up, my psychrometers up, and also set up my pre-made T for my vacuum pressure switch. This way I can actually see how much my inducer fan's pulling to the vacuum pressure switch, zero that out, hook up my manometer pressure to my probes, do a quick electronic gas leak test. I prefer my big blue, but this also helps see what's going on. Gets my combustion analyzer ready to go. Go ahead and shut the gas off, hook up my line side manometer, and turn the gas back on. Don't forget my door switch. I really like this one. And then I can start setting up all the information for the measure quick. Use the flow chart, it's way easier. Sometimes I forget things and have to go back and enter it in later. But once you enter in all the information measure quick needs, it does a lot of the calculations for you. Finally ready to start up, I can check the amps for my inducer fan motor. I'm also checking the amps of the hot surface igniter. So far everything's looking good, but we know that that igniter was damaged. It's showing signs of wear. Laugh at me all you want, but I do like to use this mechanic stethoscope to listen to the bearings on that inducer fan motor. Let's go ahead and also see what my micro amps are doing. I have two meters set up. Yes, one just for the micro amp. This one's my UEI. We're pulling three micro amps. I know we're good. After cleaning it, if we're still bad, I start checking grounds. 
Here we can look at the combustion analyzer. This one's on loan from Saruman. I'm using it specifically because it works directly with MeasureQuick. I borrowed this one because I wanted to use it with MeasureQuick. It's not quite where I want them to be. So I am going to do a little bit of adjustments on the gas valve and see if I can get things looking a little bit better. So I'm gonna take that cap off and start adjusting the gas pressure, increasing that gas pressure. And as I do, I can quickly look through my numbers and see if I'm looking better, looking closer to where I want them to be. And yes, this is looking better. I'm reading just a little CO and the flue pipe, that's where I want it. But if you notice, more of my readings are actually in the green, which makes the diagnostics faster. Instead of having to look at all of my numbers and compare that to my cheat sheet, MeasureQuick is already doing those calculations live on the fly. And so it's pretty cool. Once you enter in all the numbers, it takes a little bit of work making sure you get everything entered in like you're supposed to, but it's doing a lot of the math for me ahead of time. So pretty cool. I can also send this to a um, to report to the customer. It has the flags. In other words, one of these is ambient CO measurements. And of course, I always have my low level CO monitor with me at all times. On me, I recommend you having one on you. So we can go through the red flags. I did not clock the gas meter. I should have, I know. But if you clock the gas meter, MeasureQuick will give you even more numbers. Now you don't have to use MeasureQuick. If you use a combustion analyzer, you can use the cheat sheet. The cheat sheet, you can get all the information you need off of the combustion analyzer directly. What I like though is how I can put everything in a report to the customer and it has those red, blue, and green gauges that customers like. And I see my pressure switch, I'm pulling 1.6 inches of water column and I'm rated for 0 0.41, that's good. Just gonna check these amps for the inducer fan again, rated at 1.45, we're pulling one, so that is excellent. Now because I'm using MeasureQuick, I already entered in all the numbers off this data tag into the app. But the old school way with the checklist, you want to enter in what those numbers are going to be. But MeasureQuick is pretty cool because it does all those calculations for you. What your temperature rise is going to be and it gives you that red, green and yellow range to know with the numbers that go with it. And now after we do that, it's just a matter of taking all the tools loose, you know, setting everything down, going through the shutdown sequence of the combustion analyzer and, uh, you know, taking all the probes back off, making sure all the plugs are back in, plugs for the flue pipe, supplier, return air. And then I just want to double check, make sure everything is back together. No parts are left loose. All the plugs are in place. All the wires are good. Nothing is accidentally left unplugged. And after I do my check, I'm going to run the furnace one more time. To really understand and appreciate combustion, I highly recommend the MeasureQuick 3-day full immersion course with Jim Bergman. Absolutely great course of actually applying what you know and getting to apply it hands-on in the lab. I also recommend National Comfort Institute, the combustion and performance class. Jim Davis developed that course. He is legendary. Everything everybody teaches about combustion originates from Jim Davis. Now we have David Richardson and Adam Mufich, who is incredible instructors. They're the ones teaching that class. I recommend getting a class from them. And finally, start to study on your own. Carbon monoxide, a clear and present danger, and combustion analysis and fuel efficiency. Those books are really great reference books. I still reference those books today. But the more you know, the more you start applying it, the better you're going to be.